All right, hello everyone. I am excited to be doing a Facebook Live with you because today we're going to be talking about can adrenal fatigue cause neuro slash brain symptoms of feeling drunk, dizziness, loss of focus, brain shutting down, and otherwise known as brain fog. That's what I would classify as brain fog. So you could have that derealization, you could feel vertigo or dizziness, you can feel drunk, you can not have focus or concentration, you may not be sharp on the ball. Those are the things that we look at to define a brain fog problem. So my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I look forward to answering can adrenal fatigue cause these neural brain fog symptoms. So first thing that I would say is absolutely yes. When you have inflammation, in the body, all bets are off. And that really means you can have wherever your weak link in the biochemical chain is, you can have such a variety of symptoms. So you can have joint pain, brain fog, um, GI discomfort, uh, fiber, fibromyalgia, muscular pain. Uh, you can have so many different symptoms because the weak link in your chain happens to be those particular areas. Hey, Jason, hope you're doing well. We haven't talked in a long time, buddy, so we need to definitely touch base and get on the same page. So anyways, to answer the questions about adrenal fatigue, um, I, I, I have a website called The Truth About Adrenal Fatigue, and in that website, I really like to talk about the truth being you're not told the truth. The truth is, is that the adrenals are responsible for maintaining the stress response or orchestrating the stress response. And that has to do with balancing your fluid levels. That has to do with making sure that you have enough energy and making sure that your inflammation is under control. And that's very, very vital when we have a lot of stressors in our lives. However, we have way more stressors than we had ever been engineered to have to process on a daily basis just because of our environment, our stressors, the chemicals, the pollutants, the, the I hate to say it like the sky is falling, but we really have made a big mess of where we're living and our minerals are depleted and in, in, in our soils are depleted in minerals. Um, our foods don't really resemble foods anymore. We're not getting great nutrients out of that. Um, on top of that, we're a rush, rush, rush society. Um, we have so many tasks to do in so little time. We have Wi-Fi, we have chemicals, and all of that keeps your body in a fight or flight mechanism or a sympathetic driven mechanism more than it really was meant to. And what's behind the sympathetic uh, orchestration are the adrenal glands. So let's kind of talk about what happens and how that can be related to the neurological brain symptoms or the feeling of feeling drunk or having lack of focus or dizziness or brain shutting down, how that may have manifested and how I would look at it. So, so we know that the brain, obviously the, the master computer of the body, processes the information. And in this case, you have the um, the amygdala or the limbic centers, the old emotional centers of the brain, um, the reptilian part of the brain that knows the four Fs, you know, you have to be able to flee and, and fight and food and, and reproduce, another way of saying the, the fornication. Um, but that's where the limbic centers of the brain are, um, are called on to, to maintain. And when we have these stressors on a daily basis, that puts an emotional context to the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus then will send messages to the pituitary and then the pituitary will then send messages to the adrenals to deal with the stressors. So over time, repeatedly over and over and over and over and over again, you start to have breakdown of the mechanics and you can have so many breakdowns that are outside of the Western philosophy or the Western approach where you do a stimulation test and you look to see if the adrenals are mounting enough of a response. And if they aren't, um, you call that Addison's disease. And if they are, you say that it's fine. Um, the problem with that is it's black and white. There's no shades of gray in there. And it's not looking at things at different times of the day where we know our circadian rhythm really dictates how our cortisol is is waxing and waning throughout the day. Um, it doesn't look at the quality of the hormone. It assumes that your pituitary is making ACTH and is sending it when it may not be. Um, it also um, doesn't look at 
the the um, cellular mechanics. How well are the um, those those free fractions getting um, into the cell? Is the cell membrane good? Um, is there not a lot of free fraction because a lot of these endocrine and hormone and disruptors in the environment may create more uh, binding proteins that don't allow free fractions to actually exist? Um, detoxification, microbiome, uh, elimination. So many things go into the mechanics of those adrenals working properly. It's not easy enough to just say, oh, we did an ACTH stimulation test and your adrenals mount a perfect response and perfect, what is perfect? You know, the lab ranges could be somewhere between five to 24 in cortisol and you're at a six and you're being told it's perfect, it's not a problem. So there's so many faults with what goes wrong um, with assessing and not accepting that adrenal fatigue is a legitimate problem. Um, but anyways, don't want to go there. Um, I want to talk about how adrenals um, can, can manifest in terms of a breakdown of that whole process and how that can create brain fog and drunk and dizziness problems. So first thing I would think about is I would be thinking about differential diagnosis, like um, looking at circulation, oxygenation. Um, if there's not an adequate enough oxygenation and circulation and fuel delivery to the brain, you're going to fatigue. And when you exceed metabolic capacity, meaning um, you're, you're placing more demand than the supply of nutrients and fuel is occurring in the brain, you can have a lot of shutdown in your mechanics. You can get dizzy, you can have um, fatigue, you can have focus issues. You can have all the things that we're talking about. So that'd be the first thing I'd be thinking. I'd be thinking about restoring proper nutrients, proper physiology from that standpoint. The other thing I'd be thinking about is when those adrenals are going awry, um, they are no longer supporting the inflammatory process and they are not putting out fires. And when you have fires going on throughout the bloodstream and you have an immune system activation, you have these inflammatory cytokines that circulate in the brain and that too can create a lot of uh, dizziness and brain fog and focus and concentration issues. Um, then the other thing I would be thinking about are potential toxins, um, heavy metals, pathogens, chemicals that are circulating in the brain and lymphatic tissues and methylation and detox pathways, <laughs> thinking about a lot of stuff, right? So um, to answer your question, the, the stressors that cause the adrenals to maladapt and break down in function are the same stressors that would cause the, the brain fog and the dizziness. And the adrenals play a pivotal part in that. But the problem is, is they're not the only, they're not the only member of the crew. There's so many other roles that are played by the different parts of the body, and that's why we call it a system. They don't exist in isolation. You have the brain, you have the limbic center, you have the hypothalamus and the pituitary, and you have the other glands that still receive their messages from the hypothalamus and the pituitary. You have your immune system that um, gets depleted or gets turned off when you are activating your stress response, which studies show. Um, you have your gastrointestinal system. You have your cardiovascular system. You have your detox pathways. It's really naive to say that these things occur in isolation. And yeah, the adrenals just sort of hit, got hit on the way down from a falling star, and now they're they're not working properly. And like a fuse, you can just take that broken fuse out and put that you know replacement part in, and next thing you know, everything's honky dory. Just doesn't work that way. There's a lot that goes on in the body that has to be addressed. So just wanted to talk to you about that. And I wanted you to think outside the box and think a little bit differently on, on how all of this can be playing out. Also, we look at balancing your glucose, right? If we have um, insulin resistance or inflammation or food sensitivities or histamine intolerances or leaky gut, um, all of those things can maladapt your 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 pancreas and your insulin and your way that your nutrients get into and out of the cells, which can be very, very problematic as well. And that taxes the adrenals because the adrenals have the responsibility of sensing when glucose levels go too low in the bloodstream or in the cells, and they release um, cortisol to help stimulate um, gluconeogenesis, getting new glucose into the bloodstream. So lots of fancy terms there, not 
trying to get too sophisticated with that. I just want to um, explain to you all of these mechanics of what's going wrong and, and what needs to be done to fix it. So, so to summarize, we're really saying that the adrenals are part of the stress response. Uh, we have way more stressors and environmental chemicals and toxins and pathogens and Wi-Fi than we have ever were engineered to process on a daily basis, not to mention the mineral deficiencies in our food sources and the lack of quality nutrients and a healthy biome. Um, on top of that, um, when those adrenals maladapt and they're not functioning at full capacity, other systems in the body break down, and ultimately we lose our ability to regulate our fluid balance, we lose our ability to regulate our inflammatory processes, and we lose our ability to regulate our energy production. As a result, depending on where your weak link in the chain is, can create a lot of brain fog and dizziness. So there's where we go in terms of tying the knots together and connecting the dots. Um, I work with people all over the world and we are doing some 45 minute consultations to get some understanding on what's going on with you. Where is the broken link in the chain for you? Where is the assembly line worker of, you know, workers of 100 people not sitting at his, his or her desk and what can we do to support the widgets being produced? So we do a 45 minute no charge consultation, but I tell people that you have to be serious. I get people on the call that aren't decisive. They don't think that they have that big of a problem. Um, the people that we work with, we found that they know they have a big problem. They're not kidding themselves. And they know that there's a program out there that's proven, that has a track record, and that can get the results that they're looking for. The second thing you got to make sure is that you're coachable. You got to realize that your way ain't working. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't be dealing with the brain fog or the, or the problems. But at the same time, you're just not going to get a magic pill or a magic wand solution and expect that to fix it. You need to be critical about the process and realize what's working and what's not work working. And you need to be at the front of the line. And then the last thing I always say is you got to be resourceful. Um, it's usually up to you to multitask, to feed the family, to pay the bills, to work. Um, to balance the checkbooks, to do everything that you got to do. And at the end of the day, um, you have to get your health back because no one else is getting that back for you. So you got to be super resourceful. And if you have those three things, then great. If you don't, I can't convince you otherwise. And I don't want you signing up for this consultation because we're not a good fit. So um, it's going to be at the truth about adrenal fatigue.com. Uh, forward slash apply. Again, the truth about adrenal fatigue.com forward slash apply. Um, and that's how you do it, Nina. And there's my, there's Bryony. Bryony, I hope you're doing well. Um, I did see an email from you, so I will get back to you. And there's my boy, Taylor. Taylor, buddy, hope you're doing well. Um, we need to get definitely get together and, um, and have some fun. So anyways, guys, that's all I got from you. Um, if there's any other questions, I can answer them now. Otherwise, um, make sure you watch this again. I think there's some really good um, meaty parts of the bone, so to speak, um, in here, and you can watch it again and get some good insights. So anyways, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I, end, I look forward to ending your Adrenal Fatigue Nightmare. Have an awesome day.